people welcome back i did say there's gonna be a part two to this and uh here we are uh more string making and chill with me hello people it is 1 a.m here i should be sleeping right and i will be but uh i'm in a productive mood so i want to uh do a couple more strings um remember the order was uh seven strings these are all club bows and club strings right so we, uh, for those who haven't joined me, uh, I streamed uh, very early uh, today, well, early compared to for speaking, so I did a 3pm uh, to about 5 or 6pm stream, a 3 hour stream, where we had quite a few uh, strings to make, so just to fill in the backstory, um, the other week the club was burgled, as many of you may, many of you may know, that's a camera there, that's my microphone. Um, so yeah, uh, we had a burglary, so we lost uh, most of our bows. We've placed a new uh, order, and uh, I'm now making strings for those bows. We haven't got the bows yet, but we are getting SF Optimo Plus bows. We're getting seven 66-inch 20-pound bows and three 58-inch uh, 15-pound um, bows for the kids. I don't um, have the bows, obviously, and I don't have a jig which can make this smaller string. I've got one in the club, which I'll use, so I can't make those right now. So earlier today, we made five different strings, and we all, uh, <laughs> it was a really fun stream. I know many of you haven't seen it yet, but that was one of the best streams I've had. Long stream, but we made the strings live. We, uh, the viewers chose the colors, and then we named the colors. So uh, uh, I've posted photos on my Facebook page. I don't have the strings here right now, they're on the other table. Uh, but we have um, made, let's see, we, we made watermelon, Barbie, cheeseburger, nightshade, and night rose. And they're, they're just freaking awesome names. So well done to the stream for coming up with these ideas. Uh, I want to make, uh, those are five strings, and it's seven. Uh, so I need to make two more. I might make them now, I might make them later. It is 1am, so I'm not sure how long I'll be around. Um, I do, however, want to start by remaking watermelon. Uh, I did a miscount last time. Uh, I counted 10 strands rather than 12, and that is uh, getting a little uh, on my nerves. So I want to actually remake it before I make another mistake. So I'm going to remake watermelon. Watermelon was a green string with uh, pink serving. And that looked amazing. So I'm gonna do it again. It won't look as good uh, in this stream because it is night time. It is obviously 1 a.m. And um, at the moment, in my current room with the uh, incandescent light, well, it's actually um, oh, oh, shouldn't do that. It's a fluorescent light, but it's the um, the orangey uh, tint. So uh, everything in my room looks pink. Like even the, the red looks pink, the pink looks pink, and I look pink. Uh, I do apologize if the um, the camera looks funny, but I can't do much about that. So, uh, am I looking a bit quiet? Yeah, I, I've got the microphone placed a little far away. I'll try and boost the microphone then. Let's see if we can increase this. Because I'm, I'm talking, if I'm talking here, that should be completely fine. But I'll be working back here. So let's boost the microphone. Let's see if we can add some decibels to this. That was the mute button. <laughs> uh, can we boost? Boosters, uh, advance all your properties. Um, that's not going to help me. How about just use the mic boost button? Hang on, where's the gain? Q. All right, how's that? How's my volume now? I see bars going higher. All right, yeah, the previous stream. I, I watched the previous stream before. Um, yeah, it's mostly because I placed a microphone like three meters away from my workspace. Uh, how's it now? I can still add more gain. I didn't want to touch it before because that was my recording uh, level. Uh, but, you know, obviously, you got to change the few needs. Uh, let me know how it goes, guys. What is the volume like right now? So, I obviously don't want to shout across to the microphone. If it needs more adjusting, about the same, really. Uh, I'm just going to bump that in more. Oh, hang on. That's the... Um... <clears throat> That was the uh, mic with the um, microphone volume. Okay, sorry, this button here. All right, how about now? Whoa, okay, very green 
bars there. How about now? There is a, a microphone gain button there, and that would obviously increase the sound level. Um, I'll be talking from back here, okay? So, how does it sound now? How's it sound? So I'm here, I'm talking. Hi guys, it's me, New Sensei. Conversion of voice, don't they yell across the room? Yeah, better, good. I know my technology sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I uh, don't want to speak too loud. It's midnight, people are sleeping. Not me, obviously. So, uh, for those joining me, I'm going to be making more strings for the club. I'm going to start by remaking my watermelon. I made a mistake last time. I uh, left out a couple strands, which will work fine for the 20 pound bow. Um, I mean, it's not going to break or snap anything. And for a club bow, no one's going to care because no one's going to know the difference, but I know the difference. And I feel a little bad about that. Okay. Um, so, Kitson, you had a question before. Uh, have I used Angel Majesty? Yes, I have, actually. My first uh, serving material, which I, which I ever used, was Angel Majesty. And, no, it's definitely a very good uh, serving. Uh, one of the, the best ones. Um, the reason why I don't use it is because I like colours, right? And Angel Majesty tends to come in black and white. But it's a very good serving material. But in the end, like... <laughs> People get really picky on serving material. It doesn't really matter that much. <laughs> Almost blew your ears off. I'm sorry, Kitson. Is it, 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 it too loud, guys? Because I'll be back here most of the time, so I'm not going to be in, in that um, frontal microphone. So it shouldn't be that bad. But hi. Hi, hi Lone Wolf. Welcome to the stream. Glad to see people are joining me. So this, this won't be a three hour stream because it's freaking one in the morning. Uh, this might be a, a, a half hour, maybe a one hour. But as we're doing this, feel free to chat, ask me questions. Uh, I'll try to uh, multitask. It's good now? Lovely. Do purple and gold and call it majesty. Yeah, purple and gold is wonderful. I'm, I, I don't have purple. I don't have a purple string. I've got purple um, serving thread. I don't have a purple string. So uh, I've got purple 8125G. Um, just reminding people, I'm making Dactrin strings, not 8125G. Dactrin is good for club bows because Dactrin is slower. It's more gentle on the wooden recurves, and uh, especially for me, like it's cheaper too. Like um, Dac a spool of Dactrin, one of this costs around 10 bucks or 15 bucks, whereas um, the 8125G is around 50. So easily, um, you know, one fifth the price, approximately. So I don't want to spend too much money. Uh, on stuff that, you know, I, I don't personally use, it's the club, so there's no uh, discerning there. <laughs> what about hand simulator? Um, it's funny that um, someone mentioned hand simulator, because um, like, it was uh, one of my um, former students who does Twitch, um, kind of brought up hand simulator in her stream, and uh, I jumped in and I started playing it. <laughs> I was, what I liked, I hated hand simulator. But you know what it's like? Like you, you, have, you have this urge, or I have this urge, of creating things, right? So I don't really like the game, but there's no guides in it, all right? So when you search it up, there's nothing there. And you know, I solved the problem. I figured out how to play the game. That's why I covered it. Uh, I don't really play it apart from when I'm uh, rendering videos. So I just let it run in the background. Um, but like, it's a sort of thing where I figured out quite quickly how to properly play the game. Um, I'm going to move my microphone a bit, sorry for the noise. And it was very similar, I'll try and talk more quietly close to the microphone, how about that? Um, it's very similar to back when I played a game called Probably Archery, and you've probably heard of it. It's a game on Steam. And like it's one of those things which are made for VR and it has the really clumsy controls. And the things that people had a hard time with probably archery. You see all these people like PewDiePie and others who just like stream themselves playing the game and sucking with it. And I, I, I hate that actually. I understand that they're entertainers, it's meant to be funny. But when I made my video, I was quite good at the game. And I played all the versions of the game. So I played the original. Uh, shareware version, the shareware, the demo version. That was, it was originally made for the seven day FPS competition. So they had seven days to make a game. And the game was actually quite good. And they had the, uh, obviously the, um, the, the normal archery mode, shooting range. 
and then they uh, had multiplied death match, which was freaking hilarious. Because she had all these like free assets. I think it was Unity. It had like barrels and balloons. And that was really funny. And then afterwards they made a Steam Greenlight version. And then they finally made a full version. The full version had really bad reviews. Uh, I actually hated the game. Because it wasn't the same as what they had before. I mean, the concept was the same. They had all these mini games and didn't actually have a core concept. And I think, you know, for a game like that, you could ha you could actually get away. Like games like Hand Simulator or probably Archery, even though they're like, you know, $2 games or something, probably Archery came out like 10 bucks or something, 15 bucks. It was way overpriced for what it was. And it was bundled with a multiplayer game called Zombie Soccer or Zocker. And I don't know, like, I, I really complain about it. Um, that's three, four, five, yeah, one more. Um, I actually did um, 10 strands last time, so I'm make sure I don't do 10 strands again. I'm making 12 strands, which is proper for 20 pound bow. Dacron, that is. For um, Fast Flight or 8125G, the modern materials, you can get over 16, because they're thinner, but they're also stronger and faster. Whereas this one, you don't want as much. But yeah, so um, I, I had a bad time with probably Archery. I was, I was too good at the game. In fact, when I made my review, um, the developer said, look, you're probably like the top 1% in the world. Because I, I need the controls on day one. I played every version of the game. I, I documented everything I played. So that's why I was inspired to make um, the hand simulator videos. Because I can probably figure out how to play the game better than you know like 95 percent of the uh, play base so i don't really like the game but someone has to make it uh and you can see like korean speedrunners but that's not the same if you're playing the game so to my service to the gaming community i don't think it's really much of a service but that's why i did it all right let's get this out of the way uh, for those just joining me, again, this is, we're making um, strings for the club. I'm remaking one of my earlier strings from this morning, or this afternoon rather. Because I actually measured it wrong. Uh, I made a 10 strand string rather than a 14 strand string. So, feel free to keep asking me questions. I'm going to look back every now and then just to see how chat's going. I'm not sure how many people are watching this stream because I think, that, I think the last stream was more suitable for the American audience, which is quite a lot of you guys. Whereas uh, this one, I'm sure, uh, uh, where are you from? <laughs> I also forget the time zones. Because normally I do, I do an 11 p.m. stream here, which is kind of, I think, like afternoon for the Europeans and like just in the morning, like very early morning for the Americans. Whereas when I did the, um, the afternoon stream here, a lot more for the American crew. I think, but I'm curious. So let me know where you're from. Shout out your country to learn where each other from. Yeah. Okay, that's the first one. Pick up. Yeah, I had a bit more energy this morning. <laughs> I was slowing it. You're going past the midnight slug. Uh, things slow down just a bit. Might be a little quieter as well. You can still hear me, right, from that direction. I should lift my voice just a bit more. All right. So yeah, I'll, I'll be a little less talkative because it is 1 a.m. But uh, feel free to type away, and I'll uh, answer a few questions a bit later. Actually, let's do a bit more. I was hoping to do some training today, but um, it's a rest day and they want to break that uh, Sabbath. <laughs> I'm training like today, like a few hours time, so I don't want to overtrain. Uh, so I spent today playing um, Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. I played a lot of Rising Storm and uh, Red August 2 um, years back. But uh, just getting into uh, Rising Storm 2. It's actually not bad. 
it's taken a while to get used to because it's not your typical first person shooter. It's not, it's not Call of Duty, you know? So you gotta be a lot more tactical. And I'm getting a bit more frustrated with the automatic weapons and like, getting killed out of nowhere. I'm actually not enjoying it as much. I know this, it's, it's a particular way of playing which I'm simply not used to. So, so the game's fine. I do, I do recommend it, but it's not your action kind of shooter. I mean, you're too used to that. Good. Yeah, unravel this. That's good. Turn it back. Spin it. And we'll start our end loop. Just while we're doing that, I, I've, got, I've got quite a few videos planned, but I don't know, I've made a lot of videos for the last few weeks because I'm on break right now. I'm, not on, school, I'm on school holidays, so there's no school tomorrow or today. That's why I'm up in the morning doing this. And I was planning to do this in the morning, like 10 a.m., but I, you know, I've got time now. I don't feel too sleepy yet, so I might as well be productive. But I had a few videos planned. Like the things that these are really major videos. Like uh, the one of the videos I've got scripted is uh, how to buy arrows, a beginner's guide. And that's it's not hard to do, but just to put it together in the best way possible is tricky. Like uh, it, I, I can do a twenty minute talk, but I want to make sure it's interactive. It's got the right. Uh, tables and charts and screen grabs and live recordings and it's probably going to be my biggest project. Actually. I would have done it last year but combination of training, work, um, mood, uh, just wanted to make sure I had quality rather than just spamming a video which will answer the question but not in my standard. Because that's what most of you subscribe to me for, right? You want to get arch information, not just anything, get from me that means it has to meet, reach my standards but uh, yeah like it every time I make a video it means I'm not shooting it also means I'm not doing other things so I, I need to balance out my time a bit better but uh, one of my challenges is that when I'm not working like I kind of lose track of the time I'm spending on things because when you work you have regular hours when you've got time off the days and hours merge into each other so it's very easy to lose track of time and I do struggle a bit of holidays or time off rather term breaks, semester breaks because I don't really handle breaks well I, I'm a workaholic you could say so I, so I'm used to the routine and because of that I'm not as good at looking after myself that's my bottom loop. And uh, for those who are watching, I normally use both ends of the jig, but because I've got the thing set up with the camera next to it, I'm going to turn this around and just use one end. That works completely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, there are jigs out there which you can use, which only have one end, and that's how you do it with one end. In, flip it over. Should miss this. There we go. Can't stretch it over both, so you put the string over the closer end, then you twist it, and there you go. That's our second loop. So I'm not really in chat at the moment, I'm just gonna finish this string off. But I'm not gonna hold jig over. <laughs> what's uh what's chat saying? Um, hey, people actually answer my questions. We've got people from London, Latvia, Sweden, Hong Kong. That's interesting. Uh, any info on the break in? No, I, I doubt there will be. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's a typical like break, break in and enter. Please turn up, they can't take photos, but it's on record. These things don't get solved. Uh, we won't find out who we did it. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, probably Archer is kind of funny. Like I, I got it pretty much quickly. It's a, it's a funny game, but it could have been so much more. But yeah, I mean, with hand simulator, it's like two dollars literally. Whereas probably Archery, 
is a worse game. Like back then it was okay, but it's like 20 bucks. So no, what are you doing? China, Brazil, Norway, some wicked time zones, guys. What, what, what time zone are you in China, Tony? Because it's like 1.15 here. Uh, Kitson, yeah, I'm making Dacron. Uh, I'm using Dacron for these strings. It's not fast flight. These are club bows. I'm using Dacron only. Uh, Morton, uh, can you or will you learn compound strings? I can, I guess. I mean, like, compound strings are made very similar to this. They need to be a bit longer, but, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't work with compound bows, so there's no need for me to learn to make compound strings. Um, Alex Noodles, if you can, if you do the arrow of it, can you pay attention to the, the combo, longer draw and lower poundage? Longer draw length and lower poundage, so... I'm, I'm not sure the, the the clarification is there. Um, so if you, you, can, you can clarify that. It'd be uh, I, I can I can make a point there. Um, oh, sorry for the for the eastern narrow chart. Um, look, my the, the the video will cover how to read charts. I'm not going to teach you how to get get arrows basically, but it's why you need to get the right spine. Um, how to read arrow charts and how to buy them for online through any archery store. So that's what I will cover. Um, basically, the arrows that I bought already are the ones which um, I'll be. Uh, I, I bought them for the intention of one, having arrows for my other bows, and two, um, actually walking through how to buy these particular arrows. Yeah, I, I have. I have no way to um, to go beyond the other charts. I mean, a lot of it is actually experience. So when you know what kind of arrows you need, you don't really need the charts. But the charts are there for the pro shops, and the charts are there for people buying their own arrows. I don't really have any suggestion to go beyond the charts, but that's a bit more advanced, so the video won't cover that, unfortunately. Uh, logic check, is this a second break-in? Um, there, were, there were two break-ins, so we had one on December 25th, and we had one on uh, last week in January 3rd or something, two weeks ago. So there have been two break-ins. And the second break in was when we lost our stuff. And uh, hello to Andre. And thank you for enjoying Archery and joining the channel. Um, Legendary John, what's your average score shooting 720? What distance? And this is the, this is the, the standard ranking round, the, um, the 70 meter one. I actually haven't shot a, um, I, mean, I do shoot 70 meters, but I haven't, shot, I haven't actually shot a, uh, a proper feeder 7 7 20. Because uh, no, like, I was getting into it, but then the, the club was closed because of the uh, uh, safety issues. <laughs> and that really turned everything off. You can't shoot for six months. Um, and plus you know, other club stuff. Uh, you, get, you get thrown out of it. So I haven't actually shot a uh, full 7 20 round yet. Uh, I'm pretty mediocre, let's put it that way. Uh, I, I would probably expect out of 720 to score around um, probably 480, that's my guess. It's based on my other scores. But uh, who knows, you know, if I actually practice and I uh, train seriously, I might reach potential, you know? So I actually solve all my training problems because I, I, I have a big problem with stretching through the clicker. And what I did yesterday or two days ago was I um, moved my clicker forward by a millimeter and suddenly I could shoot fine. Because look, I shoot different draw weights. I shoot 45 pound bows, I can shoot a 50 pound bow. Not a problem. I uh, tried bare bow, right? But I have trouble shooting my 40 pound bow. And you, you, you need to have good control and the professionals make it look effortless because they have the right conditioning. Now, I, I know my conditioning is pretty bad at times, but I'm not that bad, right? So I was kind of curious why I was so, um, I was struggling so much to shoot with my clicker with a 40 pound bow. Necessarily, I've been doing this for years. And the answer I figured out was, well, the clip is still far forward. And I, I was physically um, overstretching to get through the clicker. It was only a millimeter or two. But that was the prime cause of my form problems. And when I, when I moved my clicker, so at the time my coach didn't pick it up. It simply, uh, you, it, like he always said it was a psychological problem. 
like it's like you know it's it's got clicker panic or clicker hesitation, uh, clicker freeze, and I didn't think it was. I thought it was a physical problem, but you know the coach is the coach, so you kind of go deal with deal with what he says, what he says, he says, and um, it was always psychological, and I, I never got over it, and I, I believed it was psychological, psychological. Like I, I trusted my coach, but. After he left, because he retired basically, um, I, I was kind of experimenting myself. And that's when I figured out that, well, it's actually a physical problem, not a mental problem. Because there are, there are always three areas for problems with archery. There's, most of it is technique, right? But then you also have technical or technological, so the bow itself can be a problem. So your equipment, your technique, or your mentality it's one of those three and often people associate the wrong field for the cause of problems so some people think that the technique is wrong and most of the time it is technique but you get archers who have very good technique but have a chronic problem and they keep on going back to address it as a form problem when in actuality it might be something wrong with the bow And uh, I think I was reading it from um, Rick McKinney's book, The uh, Simple Art of Winning. You, know, you talk about an example of an archer who, um, who was shooting really well, but then one day ranked really poorly. And there was no clear explanation why. And they tried everything, they couldn't fix it. And it turned out that I think the, uh, the coach inspected the bow, they found that the serving on the bottom was frayed, and the string was actually severely damaged. And that was the cause of the problem. It was um, string damage. It was nothing to do with the artist's fault. The artist's fault was fine. But they didn't correctly attribute the, the cause to um, the bow. I've made a slight error, actually. So what I've done, I've made my uh, top... No, it doesn't really matter. Because I think one of my loops here is a bit different. I want to make the top loop bigger because that's a, that's a convention and I may have made the top loop smaller uh, let's see which is the bigger one. Oh my they're the same size <laughs> uh, okay that, is, that, that that'll that, that, that'll fit a, um, a knock just fine a, a tip just fine but they're both the same size doesn't matter it's a club string once you see you know what it is and like these, these strings will probably never be removed from the uh, uh, the bow. So once you put on it once, it's not a worry. And I doubt these strings will, it will be uh, need to be replaced anytime soon. Just keep them well waxed, and they'll be fine. So that will solve most of the problems. I'm just my own string. I'll take it off all the time. But the club bows will be stored with the strings, which means that you don't need to worry about losing these things. Or replace them. Okay, I've got a whole bag of like the strings I made years ago. These are all my strings. These are 62 inch or 68 inch. But this I'm making a 66 inch string. But these strings will last forever, unless you like don't wax them for like years, which will turn really bad. But uh, these strings are very easy to uh, look after, especially when you make them nice and colourful. I mean, inadvertently, like I started off making really ugly color schemes, but during the last stream, we came up with really good color schemes. And uh, I think uh, by having each string with a unique color scheme, a unique name, even though the bows are generic, they're SF Optimal Plus, it's the same as any bow you can use. But having each bow have a character or a name means more people will be attracted to using them. So again, we have. Um, we have watermelon, Barbie, cheeseburger, nightshade, and night rose. Each one with their own different color string. So each time people come back, they have their own favorite bow. They can shoot Barbie or they can shoot cheeseburger. <laughs> Can't believe I actually used cheeseburger. But it was a good idea, and I really enjoyed the, um, making the strings with the uh, suggestions. And I think after I finish this, we'll make one more. And we'll get some ideas as to uh, what color it should be and how we should name it. That's done pretty well. Kind of 
very well. So what are people saying right now? I'll catch it a bit later. On. It's not wax. No. No. There it is. I'm using a flex bursary wax, the scented ones, and this one is ocean. Ocean scent. The ocean is basically an air freshener or deodorant. It's nice that it's scented because it smells good when you use. Uh, and when you wax it, it like, smells good on your fingers. But uh, it's not good because it's dyed and the color stains the uh, string. So if you're making like a white string and, uh, and you use, for example, a red uh, um, berry flavored scent or black um, forest scent, uh, what happens is that the um, color will rub off on the string. But uh, well, that's good. It's not noticeable, like it'll, it'll fade off and like, it'll be normal again. But you kind of want a pristine white string, which is kind of uh, what I was hoping for. But uh, blue on green, it's okay. So this is the Watermelon V2 <laughs> Redux. Now with proper 12 strands. So you call this a, a replay of the uh, earlier stream. wax inside the, the, the strands. The point of this is that they then abrase against each other so the string should last longer. We'll get us extra bit of thread and we'll wipe the string down. So we've got the excess wax off and when that does, apart from removing excess wax, it gives the string a nice round shape. Otherwise it, it kind of remains flat like a bit of a fettuccine pasta. You want spaghetti, not fettuccine. For a string. For actual spaghetti, uh, for actual pasta, fettuccine is great. I love fettuccine. That's our watermelon V2. Let's remove it. And we are done. I'm not going to put a knocking point on because I don't have the bows. They're being uh, shipped in. And that is watermelon. There we go. Green dacron with pink serving. Not sure the light picks up very well, but you can just see what I'm talking about, yeah? There we go. That's our string. Uh, that was about 20 minutes, was it? So we started at 1, just past 1. It's a pretty casual string, 20 minute string. There we go. Alright, now well, I'm getting tired. <laughs> I don't think it's been a long string, but let's, let's see how we go. It's a club open, um, unofficially, yes. Uh, if you have the code to the key, you can get in the club. Um, remember, you can only shoot there on uh, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, Saturday, and Sunday. We'll be there tomorrow or today. Uh, not sure what time we'll be there. The club is technically open. All right, let's go to uh, back to some of the questions. Sorry, I, I, I mean I'm reading chat while I was making that. But uh, what is going on, people? 
How are we? <laughs> the, well, shooting me to seven. Yeah, is, is it? I, I haven't actually scored um properly, so I wouldn't really know. Oh yeah, yeah. It sucks that um, yeah, my club shut down. So like, like a lot of us were like in the mood to get into proper training, but yeah, it's just the fact that um we had to go through the whole legal stuff first. Um, that that put, put a dent in any training routine. Let's reset the uh, jig. Uh, double check the length. Very easy to get carried away from making strings and forget that your jig will move sometimes. So I want 160.2 centimeters, which is 63 inches. And that's good. I'm actually a bit longer than that, but uh, it's, it's, I, I tend to make strings which are too short, so I, I earn the long side. It's a bit too long though. Because you can always add twist to a string to make it shorter. But you can't really make a long string, uh, a short string longer. Now this will stretch out over time. But again, you can always add more twists to the string to make it shorter. And if I make a mistake in these ones, it's okay. Because the material is cheap. The only hassle is basically finding more material. Yeah, that's 160.5. I was going for 160.1 centimeters before, which is it's not that much of a difference for uh, a bow string. But yeah, that's our first string. So, um, Legendary John, is that the Daycut Jig Elite? I'm not sure what the Elite version is. This is the Daycut Jig. Um, bought it from Merlin Archery, so this is the Daycut String Jig, but uh, it's not. I'm not sure if it's the Elite one, and I have no idea. Uh, hi Ace, what is going on? I'm making strings for the club. Uh, I made uh, five strings this morning, or this afternoon. I'm going to finish off a couple more strings. I just remade Watermelon, which is the uh, <laughs> green and pink themed string. And I've got two more to make for the 66 inches. Um, do I use knocking thread? Uh, no, I use serving thread for the knock points. Oh yeah, the, the bumblebee colour scheme. <laughs> That's cool. Um, can I use uh, 10 strand for what material or what bow, right? So, you could. Um, Matthew Monaghan can use 5 strands. That's getting thin. Um, you could use 5 strands for like a 5 pound bow. But uh, for a for a like a twenty pound bow, you want like a 10, 12, 14 strand string. Fourteen is a bit heavy for twenty pound. Um, for Dacron, uh, twelve strand is fine for twenty to thirty pound. Um, and if you're going to thirty to forty, then a fourteen strand string. And people have different preferences, right? Because a, a thicker string is slower. Um, but you know, if you have a string that is too uh too light then it comes less efficient, it can't handle weight very well, basically speaking. And yeah, um, you need to fit the knocks as well. Otherwise you have a lot of padding to do. What club is the Bershing for? My, it's my club. So all you need to know is my club. So our club was burgled, we lost our bows. So we ordered new bows for no strings and I'm making the strings. Okay, um, so let's let's get try and get a vote going. Okay, so for those who are uh, who missed out in the previous stream, what we did last time was we called a vote for what color to make and what to name it. Okay, so uh, unfortunately the, the lighting's bad, but I'll show the colors. We have white, we have pink, blue, black. And brown. I realized in the last stream when my color was wrong that people said orange. This is actually a bronze color, not orange. Uh, and we have uh, green as well. So those are our string colors. And for serving, we have purple, yellow, black, blue, 
green, pink, and white. So let's get some discussion going. What should be my next color combination? What color string and what color serving? So while we're looking at that, I'll have to chat here. Luke, thank you for your videos. Beautiful. After watching your string make a stream, I watch all your others now and make my own. Yeah, it's addictive. Like um, uh, it's it's not really important to know how to make your own because most archers won't go through like mini strings. You can buy, basically buy one; it's much easier. But it's more of a fun thing. Like one maintenance is nice. It's a skill to have. If you volunteer in a club, it's actually so important because like this sort of thing isn't transferred very well. Like people know it. But they don't pass it on that easily. So if you have the skill and you and you shoot for a club, then like the club should have someone there who knows how to make strings. Now I learnt my art off my own coach and I've taught other club members, but they don't often make strings. So I'm the only one who went out my way to buy a jig to learn to make strings. And that, that, that's kind of the person I am. I want to learn new things and apply them. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually concerned though because like, when it comes to string making, I'm the only one who does it. And I mean, most people will learn to do, like, do arrows, like do arrow points and veins. But string making is a bit more specialised because you do need specialised equipment. Um, either DIY or you buy a jig. And for that reason, it's more inaccessible. But if you want to try it out, then I encourage it. Uh, make strings. It's very good. Uh, hello to Pambia from India. Great, glad to see you're getting into archery. Ah, black and red. I've already made black and red. Uh, we called it the uh, the night rose. It turned out really well. So we, we made uh, black and purple, nightshade, black and red, which was uh, night rose. So we, we went with the theme. And then there's cheeseburger, <laughs> barbie, and a watermelon. So what do we have? Pink, white string. So white string, pink server. I, I don't want to make white strings because one... Uh, it's, I don't know, white strings, every default string that you get with a bow kit is white. And all my strings for the club have been white, apart from a green string and a pink string. They're all white, right? So it's pretty boring. The other reason is that if these bows get stolen, they'll have unique string combinations. Okay, this is my little trick here. Originally, I want to make really ugly colours. But it turned out that these colors were really good, so I'm making unique strings with unique names. You might engrave on the string, the strings can be removed, right? But you wouldn't sell a bow without a string. So if you steal the bow and you get rid of the string, then what's the point of stealing the bow? I mean, you can't really sell it anyway. Um, but yeah, the, the point is that like I want each bow to have a unique identity. And a white string is a bit plain, even with pink serving. The white string is just plain. I find it to be uninteresting. Um, I want to experiment with the new bows. I want to actually have unique names. So people who come to the club will have like a favorite bow. Like today you can use um, Nightshade. And then next week, you, if it's not available, you can use Nightshade again. It's the exact same bow as everything else out there. But the fact that each one is a different color it's appealing to people and it's, it's an easy way to get people to like it's marketable you, know, you have nightshade night rose cheeseburger <laughs> i don't know it'll call it it'll work fine um where were we so i've done the i've done black and red spartan's a nice name actually um you could have bronze and red but the, the it's more a brown color and i think this it doesn't i know spartans use bronze it doesn't match though. Red to very Spartan. I do, I do have red serving by the way, so I missed out on that. I've got red. So that that's a possible Spartan color. Doesn't look that good though. I don't think so. So where will we? Uh, I do have pink serving. I, I, I was just using it. Um, you won't see it in the light because um, it's kind of weird, but that, that's the pink serving. I do have pink serving. Can be done. So, where were we? Uh, red string, I don't have red Dacron. I've got, I've got red 8125G, not red Dacron. These are your only options. Uh, blue string, yellow serving, call it, call it Donald Duck. Blue and yellow, Donald Duck. 
Hmm, that's an idea. I should note that in the last strip we spent more time picking colours and names to actually did making strings. That's half the fun, right? So Donald Duck there. Hi Steve Jacobs, welcome to the channel. Um, sorry, I can't see. Uh, 25 pound inch, sorry. 25 pound forge plus with long limbs. Long 34 inch. Uh, could you clarify that? Is that 25 inch 4 plus with 34 inch limbs? Because you, you, the, the number of strands you need depends on your draw weight, not your bow length. Um, I mean, 16 pound for modern material like Fast Flight or AW25G or Dynaflight, that's standard. So a 16 strand string is standard. Um, you can, you'll, be, you'll be safe with that. Um... Yeah, why do I offer white strings when I make them? It's just there, it's a, it's a colour option, I don't know. It's, it's like how you put items that people don't want to make it look kind of fuller. It looks cool when you line up like this. It's there, and if people give me a colour combination which actually stands out, then I might think about that. I don't think white and pink stands out too well though. Not for what I'm doing. So, we've got blue and yellow so far. Oh, Steve, um, so 25 inch forge plus 34 pound limbs. Um, 16 strand. That, that, that'd be fine for you. Alright, sorry, back to the colours. Yellow and purple. I don't have, I don't have yellow, I don't have purple. I can't do that. I have no yellow string and no purple string. Again, I've got the colours from my 825 g which is in my box down here. I have no Dacron of that colour. And Dacron is pretty cheap, but again, I don't make Dacron bowstrings. The only reason I have this is just in case the club needs bowstrings. And the club needs bowstrings. I would never otherwise buy Dacron. Um, my entire collection of string materials, ouch, which is in this box by the way, like each of these costs around 50 bucks each. And most of these are bought from America, because we don't, we don't have a large collection. Because I think string making is very specialized. It's kind of like getting rare um, fabric material or something. So, like, I've got like colors like gold and um, like lime, like neon green and gold and bronze and silver, like really good colors for 825G. So, if I were to make my own custom bowstring with three colors or someone to buy a bowstring, I've got options. I haven't gone through this for like five years. So, it's excessive. Um, so, Dacron is something which I buy for the club, not for myself. Um, but yeah, I've, I've got, normally you only buy like red and black for the club. You wouldn't need any other colours, but these are fairly cheap, so I bought them anyway, just in case I want to make the club look pretty. And what do you know, I'm making the club look pretty right now. Um, so we've got blue string yellow serving, that's an idea. Red and blues can work as well, so we've got red um, serving blue string, that could possibly work. These two, these two go well together, very nicely. Um... Uh, Lone Wolf, there may be money in making bow strings. Uh, if you're doing this as a career, as a professional profession, as a pro shop thing, sorry, it's like 1.30 a.m. Um, yes, you can make money. Um, Grizzly Jim started his business last year, Grizzly Strings. Um, so he makes bow strings professionally. And there are several other businesses which make custom bow strings. I don't want to do it. because I, It's not what I want to do. I need to buy like bulk strings at wholesale value and spend like, like most of my day just making bow strings non-stop and I don't have the production capacity to do that um, it's just I don't want to do it I, mean, I do it for a functionality thing I don't want to do it to make money um, I do occasionally make strings for people on special request but it has to be a really special request because um, yeah it's just not worth my time like I mean yeah, like, a Dacron string is 10 bucks um, so it's not like I'm, I'm gonna get much profit from it. I don't support myself. Um, the other problem, I just forgot what it was. Yeah, um, I had I had a, a negative experience. I had one person from Indonesia um, request the string to be made, and um, you know, being a nice guy, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a pro shop. Um, he offered payment, but he didn't have the money yet. So I paid it forward. I made the string for him, sent it to him, and he never paid me. He never got back in touch with me again. 
and that really put me off making strings. Um, from then on, I said, look, I'm not, I'm not making strings for people. There's been like two or three exceptions, um, but apart from people I know personally, I don't make bow strings for other people and post overseas, because one person ruined it for everybody. I could have made strings for a very low price for people, just for fun, because I don't like getting to practice in, but I've got the practice now, I have the skill, and I don't want to deal with bullshit like that. You know, when, when one person takes advantage of generosity and decides to steal, that's completely um, ruined it. Um, where was I? Green and yellow with a touch of black. I'm not sure uh, how to get a touch of black. I, I don't want to make a multicolor stream for the club. I can. It's way too much effort for a club bow because these are bows which are used once for a person maybe twice maybe three times so i want to make a simple color scheme i thought it might take half an hour to make a bow string um but yeah it's that's um the sunrise for green and yellow what was it sunrise I'm not sure about that color um green yellow's not bad i've made one before turned out okay not sure why we call sun oh you know green grass yellow sunrise i kind of get that uh back to our colors sorry um, where was I? Blue and yellow thunderstorm. It's, it's better than Donald Duck. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, brown and green for a branch. That, that sounds pretty dull. Very naturey though. Like it's, it's kind of like tree. Like that. That like that's kind of. I know. I, I need a better name than branch. <laughs> that, that's not a name. Um, let's see. Sunrise is nice. If, if I have this uh, sunrise, I'm not sure about that. Because we have, we have all these sort of really edgy names like Night Rose and Nightshade and Cheeseburger. Sunrise? It's not a bad idea. Uh, our room? Yes, this is part two of the, uh, the stream making live stream. I made one already. Well, I, I remade Watermelon. Uh, I want to make one more before I go to sleep. Sorry, right, I'm, I'm a little slow in the chat at the moment. Um, have I made bows and sold them? No, I haven't made bows. Uh, Makito, uh, should I shoot off the shelf or shoot with the arrow rest? Um, if you are absolutely new to archery, shoot off the arrow rest. The shelf works fine, but you need to have very well tuned arrows. Otherwise, it just shoots, like it hits the bow and it just doesn't shoot straight. Uh, the shelf is a bit more forgiving, it's more accurate generally speaking, but people love shooting um, off the shelf because it's more natural. Uh, <laughs> Matt sick. blue and yellow for Sweden. How about we, call, we make blue and yellow, call it Ikea. How about that? Oh, that, 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 that I can't do that, that's that's a, a trademark, right? I can't do that, no. Ikea, that'd be, that'd be funny, just do that. Um... <laughs> Uh, where was I? I mean, I spent more time chatting than actually making strings. That's okay. Uh, this, this is just fun, really. I don't really mind too much. Um, <laughs> let's see, where was I? Uh, what's, what serving I'm using? Um, it's mostly Halo serving. Red, white, and blue. <laughs> no, I, I'm not making multicolor strings. They're fun to make, but I'm not for the club bows. They're way too uh, advanced. Oh, copper. So the, the bronze color and purple serving. Oh, that, that's an odd combination. That could work. What would you call it? So if, if we have this combination, that this, this bronze, brown, bronze, and purple, what would be the, uh, the color scheme? What would be the name of it? <laughs> and yes, kitchen. I, I look. I, I've got more than one box. I've got um, literally. I've got uh, yeah. I, I'll show you all my, while we're just discussing. So I've got um, green for my eighty one twenty five G. I've got gold and more gold. Um, purple and neon green, black. Big spool of black. The other. This is this is the um, the quarter pound one. Or the, half, the half pound. Because um, black is a very popular color. Pink. Silver. That's silver. 
Uh, I thought, is that bronze? I thought it gold in here. No, this is gold. I thought gold here. Red, a couple of these, and white. And I've got lots of uh, serving colours. So yes, uh, um, I, I think I do uh, beat you on collecting certain um, materials. Yeah. Um, my, my rationale is kind of like, if I make a string, I kind of pay for the next um, serving material. So I've got a small collection. Um, bone hole, you should set PayPal settings to sell strings. I can't be bothered. Um, not because I'm lazy. It's just that making strings takes time, right? So like, I can make a one color string in around 20 minutes flat. I can make a two color string in maybe half an hour or 40 minutes, depending on how long it takes, but it's not my job. Archery isn't my profession. So it's um, solid gold. Be oh, you know, if I, if I win a tournament, I'll make a gold string just to kind of really show off there. <laughs> That'd be funny. Um, where was I? So yeah, I don't want to sell strings. Again, the profit margin is so low that it's mostly a hobby that I'll do for people as a favor. I don't want to actually sell strings. I know people want. I know people want to sell strings. Um, I know people people would buy them. But you can buy strings from anywhere. Like you can buy um, like Dactrin for really cheap, like less than ten bucks. You can buy custom eight hundred twenty five string for twenty five bucks or thirty bucks, up to fifty for the really good custom strings. Um, but you need volume, and to make volume you need time, and I don't want to do it. Uh, I know people are like, wow, the cards are so amazing. Please make me a string sensei. I just, I just can't be bothered. <laughs> the IKEA archery team. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> no, not the color of the Swede. Um, Cadbury, man, that's a fun. Now, Cadbury has to be purple. I, I wouldn't make a. I know, it's a, I know it's a chocolate color, but I wouldn't really do this. Uh, Matthew Mulligan, I'm a recurve shooter. I don't touch compound. Cadbury Caramel. Uh, what's your best Spurging speed run? <laughs> um, that, that was this morning, right? We did, didn't we time that? Like, I don't know, if, if, I, if I do it without stopping to talk. Probably between 10 to 15 minutes, I reckon, for a single uh, string. Um, <laughs> Tune for I should get color theory. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Let, let's. Let, I'll do one more string. It's like it's nearly 2 a.m. I'll do one more string, and then tomorrow, today, I'll do. I'll do the last one. So I've made five strings. I need two more for this size. Let's pick a, a combination. Okay. So let's vote. Um, the only suggestions so far are brown and purple, and blue and yellow. It's been no suggestions so far. Red and blue is a, is a combination as well. I, I, I can't call it Spider-Man. That, that, that's, that's, that's copyright. I can't, I can't just write Spider-Man. Maybe like arachnid person. Um, so, let, let, let's, let's get some color ideas. Alright, so I'm thinking... This is not a bad idea. It looks ugly as, but that's not bad. Although I have made a brown string already, right? And that turned out pretty well. Um, yellow and black, says <laughs> Um, hmm. I mean, yellow and black is a very sexy color. That's not a bad color combination. Bumblebee. I like Bumblebee. Blue and yellow is the best. Blue and yellow does apply. Alright. So we have blue and yellow. And there's. Uh, black and yellow. Emoji, really? That's insulting, wouldn't, wouldn't touch that. Um, yeah. What do you think, guys? What combinations have I made so far? Um, I, I don't have the strings with me, but I've, I've made um, watermelon, which is green and pink, uh, nightshade, which is black and purple, night rose, which is black and red, uh, Barbie, which is pink and purple, and I've made cheeseburger, which is brown and yellow. So, okay, so remember that. So let's get rid of the, the brown color. And make one more tonight before we go to sleep. So, this is the, the vote that we're having right now. The vote is black and yellow or blue and yellow. Black and yellow. Or blue and yellow. It's a nice combination out of the way. I'm not doing both. What will be, guys? Let's vote. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I didn't name them. You named them. <laughs> um, watermelon was... What, what was yours? Yours was what, Barbie, wasn't it? No, watermelon? Blue and 
blue and yellow, black and yellow. Bumblebee. Like, you know what? I reckon people love bumblebees for some reason. So I'm going to go with the black and yellow for the last string for tonight. That would be the bumblebee. I mean, if, if, I, if I had yellow, I'd make a, a stripe one. That'd be a real bumblebee. But uh, let's do it. It's a bumblebee. It is Barbie. Yeah, I thought so. I've done night trade already. So we're going to do bumblebee. Tiger, no, it has to be stripes. If, if, I, if I make a, a black string of yellow stripes, um, that'll be tiger. Um, this is going to be a plain black with a yellow accent. So we've got bumblebee. I reckon it's a, a great name for a club bow. Because again, these are bows you have the people, right? So imagine like there's a rack of bows, and you can say, well, well, well what do you want today? You can have Barbie, or you can have a uh, nightshade, and you can have bumblebee. It's, it's a cheap gimmick way to get more people interested in your club. And interesting night is how many clubs name their bows? Taxi. <laughs> uh, I like Bumblebee. So we'll replace our um, serving. But yeah, like seriously, how many people name their bows? Like these are really easy ways to get people to find archery to be fun, right? Just just make like find fun in everything you do. Because archery is repetitive, and people like it because it is repetitive. But it's repetitive. You need to find ways to make it fun. And for people who are having first impressions, when you come to a club that is kind of trendy, not like hipster trendy, but at least like they 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 like they have the um, they get it. They're in the in crowd. Because so archery is mainstream, so you need to find ways to make it cool without sacrificing your roots for gimmicks. Things like archery tag are gimmicky. They, they can be fun. But that's not what archery is. But even some more fun things like naming your bows or naming your strings. It'd be a nice way to um like if if, if I ever sold these, these would be cool names to sell it under. Because you can pick any colour you want, but having names kind of gives more uh, value. A greater sense of value. Because people would buy for the name rather than the colour. What's my bow name? I, I, I haven't named my bow. Or I don't have, I don't have a name to any of my bows, which might seem funny, but I don't name my bows. The, the, the bow to me is a tool. I, I don't recognize its personality, which is kind of ironic because it's talking about bow strings. I'm naming bow strings, I'm not naming bows. But this isn't for me. Um, yeah, play of games. Uh, I, I will, uh, once we get the uh, the new storage space up and the bows come in, I string the bows. Yeah, sure, I, I'll, I, will, uh, I, will, I will give a video or photo or both of the uh, bows with the strings. How many strings for the bumblebee? You mean how many strands? 12. One string there. What exact kind of bows was used by the Romas? The Romans? The Roma people. Um, not sure there's a name for it because remember the idea of giving names or types of bows is, is a modern thing. It's kind of the same as swords, right? So historically, people use swords. They didn't say, "Oh, I had a broadsword, or I had a long sword, or I had an arming sword, or I had this sword or that sword." Swords were swords. We give different types of swords different names today to differentiate them uh, when we talk about both historically. And bows were the same. You didn't have a homer guard bow or a long bow or a short bow or a hunting bow or a composite bow. They called them bows. A bow was the word, that was the universal name of bow. Um, so what kind of bow? I wouldn't say there's a kind. It would it, be a plain wooden bow. I don't think the Romans would have used composite bows. And the Romans in general weren't known for bows. They were, they, the Romans were purely uh, infantry. They had auxiliaries. Uh, for cavalry and range, like slingers and bows, uh, but they didn't really train corps of archers until much later on. But the bows they use either were plain wooden bows, or they might have um, begun to use some of the composite bows which they came across in the eastern walls. So when they started coming across Parthians, they would have used, um, they would have adopted the same style of uh, bows and warfare and armor like the Parthians. That's why you had the uh, units like the cataphracts. 
that were later used by the Romans. They, 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 I mean, in Greek, they'd be the cataphractoi, but the Romans called cataphracts. Or the clibiari, which is the same thing, there's different names for heavy cavalry. So I'm not sure if the Romans would have any special bows. They would use bows, but they weren't known for them in warfare. Push it though. I'm sure I count six passes. I made one mistake so far when I made a, a tense stretching by accident. So I made a, a light watermelon and I remade it just before. This is pass number four. Us just joining in, you can say this is kind of a charity stream, right? Because I am doing for the club, I'm volunteering for this, but I'm not taking donations. The club decided that uh, we weren't taking donations, and I wasn't going to exploit my fame to get money off the club. The club could afford it, so we took the moral ground, we're not begging for money. I know people, people would want to give, but there is a, there's something about the morality of asking for money. And I'm glad the club made that decision not to beg for money. As much as people want to give, I think it's wrong, morally, to ask for money when you don't need it. Same with me, personally. I, I don't ask money from my viewers. I don't, I don't have a Patreon account. I don't have a PayPal donation. Because I have money already. I, I work off of money. I don't need to... Um, ask viewers to give their hard-earned money to someone who doesn't really need it. Uh, the, the channel has you know, ad revenue, it supports itself. As much as the ad pocket sucks, it is self-sustaining for now. Assuming the costs are like zero, right? Then I don't have to worry about that. For the people who do this as a hobby and choose to, it's fine. And I watch channels like um, Matt Easton from Scholar Glad Gladiatoria. It's, it makes sense for him because he can take time off from work to um, do stuff he likes, like make videos. But I don't want to take time off work. I don't think that it's viable for me to reduce my workload, my full time job, to do this. And um, I actually like my job. So, you know, when you're a teacher, if, if I get there will be a part of my career where I might consider scaling down but for now I'm completely happy where I am so I don't need your money and the club doesn't and again I, I find that for those who need it for um, you know, to, to make a living out of what they want to do it makes sense there's nothing wrong with that but this isn't my living and for me to ask money from my viewers which I don't need, in my opinion, is exploitive. And uh, I find there is morality in doing this for what I do. Like, it's my value that counts more integrity and morality, and not greed. So, what money I do make is token. And it goes back to the channel, I'm buying things like microphones and cameras. I don't really buy equipment though, I don't really like buying lots of equipment. If I had to, the option is there. And more importantly, it doesn't come from your pocket. So anything that I screw up with, is my expense, not yours. I mean, even the strings which I make for people, I don't charge a lot for. Um, I, just, I just charge for materials, not for the labor. labor. Because you can really ups upsell this, right? Because the custom string color, the string itself, the materials are a pretty standard fee. But it's the labor that goes into it. The, uh, the quality and finish of the strings is what people really want and they make money from. So we make a first loop for Bumblebee.
<laughs> and yeah, we spent way more time thinking of the colour and name than actually making it. Spin to win. It's funny how at night time you get so... You become very aware of things. I mean, I'm, I'm a night owl. Like, I, I don't... I operate much better at night time. Of course, my job means I work in the day. But as a person, I'm more active at night. And you become super aware of things at night time. It's way too quiet sometimes. I'm probably being way too loud right now. The last one wasn't paying attention. I, I made both loops the same size. Which is kind of silly. Hopefully this time I get it right. Okay, that's good. Good loop size. The next one is to make it bigger, that's all. First loop done. Let's remove that. This is a nice color scheme. Black and black and yellow look turn out really nicely. Good bumblebee. But yeah, on, on the net of money, I, I tend to um, separate myself from the club. I mean, I am not the club. That's something I, I made a point of in the last meeting we had. Was that as much as I volunteer for the club, I'm not the club. So I personally shouldn't profit from the club's fortunes, and the club too shouldn't profit from my fortunes. So we're separate beings. I volunteer for the club, no, I'm not the club. It's actually a bit of a conundrum because a lot of people want to like train during the, uh, or like learn from me during the uh, off season, but. I can't take money because I'm a volunteer at the club. I don't get paid for it. So, a bit of a dilemma there, right? So, let's take a bit of a break here. What are people talking about? Purple Haze. Hey, that's not, that's not a bad name. Purple Haze is right. If, if I had a purple string um, for Dacron, but I don't, because I don't want it. <laughs> it's a club boat, remember, guys? Where are we? Is that a question? Is that a form question? I might answer it. Sorry, I'm going to add a full question like I'm making strings right now. Corrosion. Green and bronze with corrosion. That's a nice name. Not bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't call it cranberry. Alright. Back to string making. Yeah, pretty, pretty low crowd this time around. I mean, like, earlier today we had a pretty large um, number of viewers. I think like 100 or so. I, I, I didn't check the stats. But by the time, if we had like a thousand views by the end of the uh, the stream, this is a very quiet time. I, I guess it doesn't suit anybody really. Yeah, but if I started like maybe five hours earlier, or five hours later, maybe more people would be around. Uh, I might wake up early to uh, finish the strings off, so that way nobody missed out the stream. Hopefully. And of course, all these streams are automatically saved to uh, YouTube, so you can find them in my uh, video playlist. But uh, I've got a pretty big training session lined up later today. Um, I do intend to do the state short range championship. I didn't do it last time, but uh, I, I've after fixing my four problems spontaneously, I decided that this I didn't sign up. Crap. Um, the registration closes uh, tomorrow. I need to remember to sign up today. I'm sure many people in Victoria would be looking forward to my return. If only for comical reasons. Like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a terrible competitor. I turned it really nicely. Good length. This is a very nice color. These are really luxury bowstrings, guys. 
I, li I like how, for those who just joined me, like they joined me last time, I said that these are going to be ugly colours. But these colours are really good. And I think, um, just to go, go before, I'll talk about how like you show some in your club you can make strings. Some in your club you can make strings has a passion and time to be creative. Because I, I tell you, every club uses the standard bow strings. The white strings with the um, whatever serving you have, black serving. So that, that's what comes with the bow. And I don't think anyone in a club has the time and patience to make custom strings for club bows. Because club bows have no personality. They just make it given out to you, all the beginners. You make custom strings for yourself, not for the club. But this is different. Every bow now has its own name and personality. And for me personally, the fact that it was chosen by you, the viewers, is something special. So instead of giving you know money to the club and money to me, help me part of our journey. That, that's the idea, right? Because you can say that you know it was your idea to make the bumblebee. I think that's much cooler than saying that I gave 20 bucks to the club. Because it's unique. That, that, that's what it is. It's like how, like, I, I want to uh, make another announcement for a shirt art project. Um, a couple of years back, I, uh, instead of asking for money, I said, Look, if you want to give me something, give me a club shirt. It shows me where you come from. That's, that means more to me than 20 bucks. Or 40 bucks, whatever. People, well, people want to pay, I know, but I don't want to be paid. But I do like knowing that what I, what I teach is, is having some kind of effect out there. I know people at clubs, you know, I have to use my material, they like listen to me, they recommend me. That's amazing. Now, I'm just some high school teacher from, you know, Australia. I'm not a professional arch, I'm not a professional coach. But to have people like, want to share their journey with me, that's the best part. And um, to me, having some kind of tangible relic, like a shirt, that, that tells more of a story then, you know, 20 bucks. Because again, for me, the money doesn't mean anything. I work a job, that's professional, I have money. Not a lot of money, but I have money. And getting more money doesn't make me happy. Especially now we live in a time where, you know, we're materialistic consumerist, capitalist, it's easy to just ask for more money, but the, the worth of a person is not measured in money. It's measured in happiness. I'm, I'm not the happiest person in the world. But money won't change that. Alright, spin to win. Tighten my jig a bit. I, was, I, was, I still want to find my, uh, my other jig. But I bought a bottle one, a really good one for 50 bucks. This is like 10 bucks. And the, and the bottle is luxury. I can't find it. Uh, I was going to buy a new one just before, but it's a waste of money. Because the cheap ones work fine. But the other ones like luxury, so like rubberized rollers. But, um, yeah, you know, tools are tools. And uh, you're not going to spend too much money just on a serving jig. Beautiful, that's a perfect serving too. The end ones I were a bit loose, I didn't spin it consistently, but uh, that was a perfect run. Super smooth. When I first met my mom, my first bowstring, I was so happy at how the serving turned out. And every person I've taught to make strings since have been so happy with the feel of the serving. Because when you do it right, it feels consistent and smooth. I love teaching people to make strings. So I don't, I, anyone who wants to make a string, I say, look, I, I can make it for you, but for no extra cost, I can show you how to make one. And they basically make their own string. Using my tools and my equipment, so I charge it for the materials, but I, I show them to make a string, and they make their own string. And it just, it's more satisfying when someone makes their own string it, 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 you can buy a string, but making your own is special. There's more attachment to it. It's like 
I'm making your first lightsaber. <laughs> but um, yeah, I guess that's the archer's equivalent, right, to making your own bow. But barring that, because you know, a lot of us are just buy our modern materials and modern bows, making your own string. So that is um, something which doesn't, doesn't take much effort. Cross that boundary of being too hard, you just do it. And look what I'm doing now, right? My coach taught me to make one string. I've made a hundred since. And to me, it doesn't get old. And when it does get old, you find ways to make it more exciting. Like what we're doing right now. Making a live stream, string making, where you guys pick the colors for the club and the names. And right now, we're about to finish Bumblebee. And like I said, it took around like 15 minutes. This is just casual. I was just speed running this. 10 minutes for the string, approximately 15. Uh, I, I probably would take more time for the Duke Isle strings, but you know what? I, I, I have been thinking about this. How would this sound to you, right? What if I decided to do a charity stream, right? I would make strings on the stream and sell them and all proceeds go to charity. How would that sound to you? Also, I don't want the money. There's no point in me like making a live stream where I auction the strings off and just pocket the money myself. But what if we do a charity one? Because they're, they're running the archery charities, right? But what if we pick, pick a charity and we do a live stream where you pick the string colors and then we sell them. What do you think? Because no one's done it before, right? And it doesn't matter if you've made like one string or 20. It's all for a good cause. That of course takes a lot of time and commitment, but uh, it's an idea. What do you think? A charity, charity strings? And what would you call it? How about strings for things, right? So the idea is that we, we sell both strings and we donate the proceeds to um, a children's hospital to buy things they need. Strings for things. I'm sure people will buy strings then, even though like, they don't need the string, I'm sure you'll buy a string for charity. So, that's our bumblebee. Nice colour scheme, black and yellow. And there we go, bumblebee. That means uh, later on, we're gonna make one more stream. I'm not gonna do it tonight. It's like 2:30 a.m. now, 2:20 a.m. I'm asleep. And that's our uh, sixth string for our collection. One more for the 66 inch, and maybe uh, three more, which I can't make right now. It's too sh too short for my jig. But uh, that's our bumblebee. So we have watermelon. Sorry, just not my camera there. Watermelon and bumblebee so that's the last thing for this stream which is two but it's a short stream it's not going to be a massive stream because uh, it is 2 a.m so let's do our last catch up on chat where are we up to hello from people in america and uh Guten Tag to my friends in Germany. Uh, Rolf, making strings looks relaxing, like fletching. Yeah, exactly the same. If you if you fletch arrows, sorry, you see my camera. Yeah, yeah. If you if you fletch arrows, you know it's it's not like 
it's not intensive, right? You don't have to like concentrate a lot with clutching arrows. Just kind of do an autopilot. And making strings is just the same. It's just, you know, you do it, you don't really think about it. There's no real quality care, apart from like doing the multicolor strings. But um, it's really simple stuff and uh, very easy to relax while doing so. Uh, Shalasa. How many strings could what I need to do until I go cheaper by doing them myself? Good question. Um, I, in my opinion, I don't think it's cost efficient to make your own strings. I did say in my videos about string making that it is kind of efficient. The things that you need a jig. The jig can cost hundreds. A cheap one might cost like less than a hundred, but a good one costs hundreds. You could make your own jig for very low cost with a pipe, a wooden plank and some arms. So you can get away with a very cheap DIY jig, but you need a startup cost. So you need to buy the serving jig and the string jig and the string materials, and that's most of your cost. Now, once you get it going, um, it's still not cost efficient because you're not selling it for money. All right, so again, Dacron, you could buy a spool of Dacron for around 20 bucks. You can, and this can make around six to 10 strings, depending on how long your bow is. So you can make six strings from one of this for 20 bucks. Uh, or you can buy one Dacron string for 10 bucks. Now for this material, the 825G is a bit different. So a quarter pound spool of thread is around 50 bucks. Sorry, an, an eighth pound. Um, and a quarter pound spool, it's around like, you know, uh, probably 70 to 80 bucks. I can't remember the price off the top of my head. Um, and again, you can make around, um, for a quarter pound spool, you can make around maybe 12 strings. So you could make a lot of strings, plus a serving too. So if you just cut the materials alone, it should break about even. Uh, more it might be slightly cheaper to make your own strings. The thing is the startup cost and make of getting all the equipment is uh, substantial. So, and again, in your lifetime, you probably won't need to make more than like three or four strings. Now for me, because I can make strings and I've accumulated a large collection of, of threads and colors, if I want to make a string, I'll make one. If my string looks slightly too old or frayed, I'll make a new one because it's easier to kind of make a new string than to worry about fixing an old one. So for me, it's not a problem. So for me, it's more about having the skill. Um, and again, as a club instructor and basically the only per the, the uh, I guess the, um, the Lord of the strings at the club, um, I, I need to know this and I have the tools for anyone, the club to make their own string. And that's a unique thing that I want to pass on at some point. But I am the Lord of Strings, and but until then, um, it, I, I don't think it's cost efficient at all. It's more of a hobby rather than um, something you do to cut costs or to make profit, unless you do it professionally. Good question though. Uh, a plus O one, yes, it is two twenty five a.m. here. I am a night owl. R uh, Re Rose, what age do you start archery? Um, I've only been doing archery for six years. Uh, so that would mean I was about 23 at the time, or 24. Um, and the story of that is that I I was in a long-term relationship. This is one of those stories, all right? I was engaged, and the engagement broke apart. My partner walked out on me. And in the aftermath, in that free fall, when you're in the emotional kind of wreck, um, I came across archery, and I became married to archery, basically. So it's a nice way to find a new commitment to replace what I lost. So that's how I started doing it and when I started doing it. Um, do I do professionally? No. And it's very hard to find professional archers. Um, you know, most, they're either sponsored or they have an archer related job. They're like you know, running a store. Um, most archers are amateurs. I don't do professionally. I'm not particularly good either. Uh, yeah, Bumblebee, have you read Way of the Archery? I, I've just started reading it. I haven't gone very far in, into it. I'm actually preparing for a state championship right now, so I want to dedicate more time to my actual bow. Um, and the things that the bow I have right now, the Mandarin Duck short bow, it's too short. It doesn't have a long draw length. I can't get it past that part. So um, even if I learn properly, I can't actually um, replicate the correct form, which they teach in um, uh, Qing archery. But it's really good though. 
uh, Kits and Tan, uh, what shoe material do I use for my competition bow? Um, 8125G. I have no real preference. Um, it's just that it's just the, the most common thing I can find and the most co colors I have available to me. And, and, and because I started with one, I just got them all, so there's no real benefit from it. Man, I'm dehydrated. Oh, my sore throat. Mm. Oh yeah, the, 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 the charity strings. Oh yeah, people are interested, huh? So for those of you who missed out, I said before that, you know, if, if I were to like make a charity stream where I made custom bow strings that you pick and you name, and then we sell it to you and you, you buy it, and all proceeds go to charity, would you be part of it? I'm not sure how it does work, but you know, the idea, we call it strings for things, where we sell strings and we donate the proceeds to a charity a hospital where they can buy new equipment. No idea how it worked, but charity strings. That's an idea there. What materials were used in this one? Um, A plus, uh, Dacron. Uh, B55 Dacron, or B50 Dacron. <laughs> Philip Decker, how many strings were there? So I don't know, right? It's a charity. And the idea is that you don't really, like, this is more like a fun thing where we can make strings, we can donate to something. I don't know, like, you know, well, it's, it's a charity stream. And would people pay a hundred bucks for a stream? I don't think so, right? I mean, at minimum, it might be $20. Let's say at retail price, a custom string, let's say $30 US, just, just to like make it average it out. You can make a really good one for 50 bucks, or you can get a cheap one for 20 bucks. But let's say a good custom string, is around 30 bucks US. All right, would you pay that price or more if this was a charity string? All right, so you can keep the string, you can use it, but you have a story that go with you um, and you can be part of something. I don't know, uh, how, how would it work for you? What was I? <laughs> Matthew Mulligan, can you shoot a 10 pound competitive? No, you can't. Um, a 10 pound bow doesn't reach that distance. You can barely reach um, 10 meters, let alone 70. Doesn't work that way. Hi, Keith from the UK. Uh, Yola, are you familiar with uh, a way to make an easy style finger ring? Uh, no, I don't know how to make thumb rings. Uh, William, would you live stream War Thunder sometime? I can live stream War Thunder, but is there really a demand for it? Yeah, so I've got a very small viewer base for War Thunder, both in terms of my subscribers, and generally speaking, a lot of people stream War Thunder. And because Realistic tends to be more popular on YouTube, I don't play that. So would people really be interested in watching me stream games? I am thinking about it, because there are some games which I started as Let's Play, so which I want to finish off, and I'm not going to finish off by editing it, I'm also just do live stream it, I have some fun with the audience. But, you know, is there real demand for it? So not really, uh, I'm not keen on it, don't see why um, there would be any demand, like why stream for like 10 people, alright? And I, I appreciate your views and your subscriptions, but, you know, it's, it's not worth my time to spend an hour streaming, when I could spend an hour making a tutorial, which has a lot more demand in general. Uh, Siptane, you asked me a question before, I just got it then. So, how do I keep my bow arm straight without wobbling or moving to the left? Sometimes my bow arm feels fatigued, maybe because of high poundage. Yes, it's probably that. Um, remember, remember to keep pushing forward. A lot of people forget to push forward and they basically collapse and they cramp up as they shoot. Draw weight it might be a problem. I don't know what draw what you're using though, okay? So I can't say for sure what it is, but if you can't push forward with this arm, then draw weight is probably the cause. Big problem there. Uh, where was I? Hey, Tin. You bought a Samic Sage because my videos. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> no, Samic Sage is fine. I, I shot my Sage for the first time for quite a while. And man, I, actually, I actually want to do a video where I, I just practice with the Sage. Because when I started shooting the Sage, I had never shot a trad bow properly before. And now I've shot many trad bows since. So I want to go back to the Sage and shoot because I shot it and it felt great. 
Uh, it was already a good bow, but I've shot like several bows since. It still is a good bow. So well done to getting the Sage. I hope you had fun. Uh, Philip, uh, do, so I like the Hot Horizon. Yes, I think I like the Hot Horizon. Um, it's an okay bow. Um, nothing wrong with it. It's a good competitive bow, uh, mid-range. I've handled better, but um, you know, it's a, it's a good bow to, for an, a beginner to intermediate. Uh, you'd be happy with that. Um, the difference between Bear Bow Riser and Olympic Recurve Riser, they're normally the same thing. Um, the only reason why some might be better for Bear Bow is the weight. Bear Bow means you can't use a Sorry, you can't use a long stabilizer. So the, the bear bow itself, sorry, the riser itself is typically heavier. Or it's able to mount weights internally. So uh, certain bow models have like an internal um, uh, structure where you put weights in. You customize the weight inside. So yeah, it's mostly balance and weight. Um, Olympic rear curve tend to be light in the middle. So you can put more stabilizers on the outside. Whereas a bear bow riser tend to be heavier in the middle. That's the main difference. Uh, Rolf, is there a web page with info on different materials and different between them strings? N I don't think so. I mean, like when I researched the stuff for my video on different string materials, there was nothing. And now the only thing is my video. If one day somebody wants to do a scientific study on different string types, I'd be really happy to see it. But I, I can't find a difference. It's just so specific that I don't know. Uh, Linus, are these streams done regularly? No, this was not scheduled. Um, I just had to make um, strings for the club. And I thought, well, let's make it fun. Um, make it a live stream for you guys. Because, you know, I, I've seen people make strings, of course. But this is the sort of thing where like I don't have to like sit here and wait for questions. Um, and the Q&A's are fun too, but they kind of drag on, whereas here I'm doing something and people like watching it, like it's relaxing for me and relaxing for you guys as well, because I, I chat while I'm doing this, you need to like, talk, otherwise you go crazy. <laughs> Cranberry string for the other uh, charities, why not right? Make, make, make whatever you want, call it whatever you want. Uh, thanks, Play of Games, for the uh, the cost efficiency. Oops, not my water bottle over. Um, twenty five plus strings to equal out. Yeah, like twenty five strings is more than a lifetime of strings. Um, the uh, the average archer can probably get a year or two out of their strings. A full time competitive archer might replace the string every six months. Okay, so unless you shoot for like fifty years, you're not going to use twenty five strings. 30 euro for a string. Ah, good. Uh, my shirt is Lancaster. Uh, that means you live in Lancaster. Duh. Um, no, I don't live in Lancaster. This is the La Lancaster Archery shirt, which is now made famous by my neo viral video. <laughs> I reckon I can wear this walking around. People go, oh my god, it's a YouTube guy. So that's pretty fun. Uh, I don't live in, uh, in Lancaster though. Uh, the Hattori one. How. Bad is to start with a 30 pound phantom for someone who is 16 years old. It's tough. It's not bad, but it's tough. 16, I normally, I mean, even for adults, I normally recommend 25 pound or under. No more than 30 pound for an adult with no archery experience. The main reason is you will never regret buying a bow that's slightly too light, but you will always regret buying a bow too heavy. It's doable for a 16 year old. But you have to take care not to injure yourself and to shoot with correct form. Do recurve strings need different? Uh, do recurve bows need different strings than uh, long bows? Uh, not necessarily. They they can both use um, uh, endless loop strings, and they, they can both use Flemish twist. The materials may be different. Okay, so if you're using a traditional long bow made from all wood. Um, the modern strings might be too fast. They might cause damage to the limb tips. Uh, so Dacron is better. The um, that's probably the safest modern synthetic material. Uh, but yeah, it depends on what kind of long we're talking about.
<laughs> yeah, there are there are lots of um, places called Lancaster. I think Billy mentioned making another channel. No, I, I barely have time for one channel. I'm, I'm not gonna make two or three channels of different things. My channel is based on me, not what I do. And I should last time answer the question. Yeah. Um, hello from South Africa, Rio Rose. Sorry, I'm I'm just catching the chat here. Have I played Mordhau or Fortnite? I haven't played Fortnite. I haven't played Mordhau. Is Mordhau out yet? So I, I I saw the trailer a while ago. I didn't realize it was already out. Um, Tom Francis, uh, England. I'm I'm from Australia, not England. I know people got my accent wrong in my other videos. I'm from Australia. Uh, Bubbly Book. <laughs> uh, I haven't uh, managed to get a, a Mybo Riser yet. No. Unfortunately. Patrick, what do you think about high-end bow prices? Um, they're high-end, but, you know, what can I say? It's In Australia, archery equipment is much more expensive. So elsewhere, you might think, oh, it's really expensive here. No, in Australia, it's really expensive. Um, that doesn't make it any easier for me. Uh, Gabriel, I'm not comfortable with your Reeves R2. Yeah, I'm not comfortable either, and neither was the distributor. He, I don't think he was very happy. He was paranoid that I would tank his sales. But I can't lie, right? So, um, I, I think like, I said in my follow up review, I think the bow is okay, but I think the accessories are crap. Um, I mean, if you have nothing to start with and you're getting your first kit, it's a starting point, but if someone has done archery semi-seriously, I would get rid of everything right away. In fact, I, I, I we had a discussion with the uh, distributor, and we we wanted the bow for the club, because we needed club bows, like better ones. Unfortunately, he wouldn't sell them separately. I didn't care about the um, the accessories. We did we didn't want quivers. We didn't want arrows. We didn't want the rest. We didn't want the sight. We just want the bow. And that was not possible. So that was already a no for me. Um, and bad business. I'll say it now just frankly. Like there are, there, are, there are companies who have their values and have their mission statement and have their goals. So if a company, let's say Mandarin Duck, wants to contact me and they have and do like you know, review or bow. They don't have to like woo me into like paying me money to review this bow positively. If it's a good bow, I'll say it's a good bow. Um, but there are other companies, and this distributor was kind of that, that sort of person who wanted to pay me money, who wanted to, who expected a good review, and I'm like, you can't convince me that your bow is good, right? Like, either I use it and I think it's good, or it's crap. And you can't tell me as, like, like he, he rang me up so many times, you know, you know wanted to be like, Ask for dinner and say, "Can you mind talk about things? Make you part of the business." So I'm I don't care. Right, I've got my own thing to do. A lot of people don't understand that. Um, like some people already have the career set. I make far more money from my job and even my YouTube channel than if I partner with someone to sell Chinese goods. It doesn't work that way. But it's just so sad seeing him say, "Oh no, you, you can buy the kit for 120 bucks, but just give it the arrows." We don't want to get rid of the arrows. Like if 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 the arrows cost us money. We don't want it, because what's the point of getting a bunch of crappy fiberglass arrows? We want good arrows. So if you don't want to sell us like good arrows, then just sell us the bow. No, it comes in one kit. The manufacturer won't give me a separate thing. Well, too bad then. So my biggest complaint about the R2, the kit sucks and you can't swap it out. They sell it as a kit. So sorry about that rant there, but yeah, the R2 to me, because I'm, I had such a close relationship with the distributor, um, I, I have a negative impression. The bow itself is fine. We shot it many times, the bow is good, um, but the accessories are trash. Um, sorry, I missed the question before. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Costa, what state do I live in? I live in Victoria. I, uh, I'm in Melbourne, Australia. I float around those. So I might go to interstate for competition every now and then. I haven't done it before, but that's something I'd like to do one day. How do you donate? And more, I don't take donations. Uh, William, you've had reconstructive surgery on your left shoulder and, and you're right-handed. 
Uh, start light, maybe um, 15 to 20 pounds. 20 pounds for adult. Uh, many people um, will uh, rebuild from a low draw weight. If you want to invest in archery seriously, try a bow training tool like the AccuBow because they allow you to go from very low draw weight to very high draw weight. So you can um, rebuild your strength up that way. William Stir, I hunt with a 55 pound recurve. I've seen 70 pound recurve for good price. Have I shot 70 pound? No, I haven't shot 70 pound. My highest is like 50, but I'm a small guy, so it's not, it's not even that strong. <laughs> Bone hole, 1.8 million is viral. Yeah, I like that. It, it was, it was, it wasn't trending because uh, the trend you need to be like, you know, um, Jake Paul or someone. But for a for a for a very low key um, niche sport, that was a pretty amazing result. And I, th I think the, the the biggest game it brought archery into the spotlight for many people who hadn't seen archery or didn't know much about it. So big success. That's probably the best thing that that happened last year. Make 50 strings and bid. Bidding's not a bad idea. Hi Wayne. Um, yeah, bidding for the strings. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it could work. I mean, I don't think people would pay like a flat, like $50 price. But people would bid for it. Yeah, it, it. It's more for the fun of donating to a good cause. Um, and having something to show for it. But um, I want to make it special for you guys. Matthew Monaghan, what pound should I recommend for a beginner? £25. Because the, the, the beginner... Um, the beginner uh, draw weights, it's a balance between either um, ha having a high draw weight, oh, no, sorry, it's a balance between ease of use versus economy. Because if you had unlimited money or unlimited limbs, you would basically buy two pound increments for every limb. But people aren't going to buy 10 sets of limbs. Even if you can afford it, you're still not going to buy it, it's just too convenient. So people will normally jump up by five pounds or so. So that's why I recommend a lower draw weight, but people want to shoot a high draw weight. So it's a compromise between draw weight and how many times you want to buy. That's why a 25 to a 30 pound bow is my general recommendation for a beginner because most people can shoot 25 pound fine. Most people can go into a 30 pound okay, but the higher you go, the risk it is for someone to develop bad habits and become injured. A lot of people say I shoot 35 pound easy or 40 pound easy, and I, I believe that. But they're not everyone. I work with absolute beginners, people who've never held a bow before, and I know many of these people who might be full grown adults can't properly hold a 20 pound bow. So that's why I'm a bit more cynical when people say I can shoot a heavy draw weight. Sure, they can, but it doesn't mean someone else can't or someone else can. So that's why I'm conservative with my recommendations. Um, what was I? Uh, oh, hey, uh, Tom Francis, what finger tab would you recommend that is not too expensive for bare bow? Not too expensive, uh, bare bow, the AAE Cavalier. Nice and thick, simple tab, nothing too special, isn't too expensive either. AAE Cavalier, that's what I said before. Uh, here in Italy, you can get a Hoyt factor for around uh, 600 euro, which is 926 AUD. What's the price around the world? Um, that's not my question you ask somebody else. How, how much does a Hoyt factor cost? I, can't, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't use Hoyt factors, but um, you can check. Bobbly book. Yeah, that's his fault. Yep. Yeah, no, it's it's like the the funny thing was like his business partner. This is the um, the uh, the R2, the toe point guy. So his business partner was, is my is our club member, and our club member is that he's he's got a much more rational head because when he saw the review, he said, "Well, good, we need that feedback so we can pass it back to the manufacturer to make improvements." And the phone call came back to me directly from the distributor saying, "No, they can't do it. We can't do it. We can't. Well, if you can't do it, we're not going to buy it." And back then, I was club president, and now I'm not, so I didn't give I didn't crap, give crap crap, crap anymore. But as club president, I said, as club president. We need these bows, we don't need these accessories, we already have them. If you can't um, adjust your package to sell to us, then we're not interested. And that's simple business. If you can't cater to the needs of your clients, we're not interested. And even from the beginning, like we were interested in, like they, they want to have a display in our club. And like, well, our guys don't want R2s. Our shooters 
are going to get winning wins and SFs and Hoyts. Right? They're not going to get R2s. An R2 is not a competitive Olympic bow. We don't want that crap. I didn't say that out loud, but you're saying this is a $100 bow for someone who wants to be a state champion. Hell no. That's not how it works. The bows aren't that good. Um, so that was the... Um, that, that that was that was the complaint we had. Like, look, I, none of our guys want bows because our members already have bows. And for new members, we wanted to buy good gear, not crap gear that will get rid of in two days. So, um, really bad business sense. I told him, if you wanna like get get um awareness or like if you wanna get um uh um what's it visibility, go to a trade show. Go go to uh, a competition, go to a camp or something, an outdoor store, and try to sell your goods there. Then go to an archery club who wants proper equipment, um, and try to sell us these cheap packages. Um, go go to an outlet. The, the, the um, archery supplies in um, Adelaide or South Australia they they sell toe point bows. So make a relationship with a vendor and see if you can get on the inventory. But for a club, we don't sell bows at clubs. I'm not interested. So uh, the fact that um, you, you couldn't, um, or he couldn't um, adjust his package to suit us, he, he, he doesn't have our business, unfortunately, for him. All right. Uh, hi, Wayne, by the way. Uh, what have I made since? Um, I haven't made anything since. I, I, I remade watermelon, and we just finished making a bumblebee, which is uh, mentioned last time, so we brought it back. All right, where was I? Uh, Maris, how do you get over target panic? Wow, that's a topic in itself. I have no tips. All I can say is remove all the stressors that cause you to shoot poorly. That usually means distance and target. Shoot blank butt at very close distance and re force yourself to recover from the slump. That's my only suggestion because you, you can't shoot in a mindset where you're trying where you're panicking over hitting a target. I will make a video on that one day, but uh, that's very very tough to get across. Um, Matthew Mulligan, what poundage did I start with? Uh, I shot the 15, 20, 24 pound club bows. My first bow was 34 pound. My current bow is 40 pound. Uh, Martin HH, can a recurve bow be small and still be strong? Yes, the draw weight or strength of a bow isn't based on size. You can have a long bow, which is 30 pounds, or a short bow, which is 60 pounds. So, um, no, that, that, that's fine. You don't need, you don't need a, um, a, a long bow. There are different factors. So a shorter bow will stack more. So the draw force curve would be far more aggressive. Whereas a longer bow will be far more gentle. That's one of the key differences. Let's see. Gabriel, do I know any uh, left-handed bows similar to the Phantom in price and style? Check out the Windrunner. Um, I'm not sure if that's left-handed. I think there's a left-handed Marvel Windrunner. Windrunner. Um, it's, it's not a, it's, it's not the same style as the Phantom, but it's the same price as the Phantom. Um, you won't find a left-handed Phantom or, or that price range because the, the Mandarin duck bows really cut corners in um, like manufacturing. They're still good, by the way, but they're not great. And the sh the main thing is the shipping is very low. That's why they can get away with it. But uh, you won't find that anywhere else. If you can't find a left-handed phantom, you won't find an equivalent. Linus is for a complete beginner. Is a ten lesson workshop a good way to start out? Yeah. Um, the workshops will normally teach you all the basics, including safety, equipment, using a sight, um, shooting a bear bow. Give you basically a taste of everything. Yeah, that, that's fine. It, uh, it it depends on. Um, how the club organizes its course, but for the most part, they're completely fine. Uh, Wayne, is bow hunting legal in Victoria? Yes, it is. 
Tom, am I planning on releasing any merchandise? No, I'm not. <laughs> what would I... If, if I did, what would it be? Because, like... I, I, I get why people uh, sell merchandise. It's kind of like a community thing. So people who are part of the like the, the new sensei community have something to show for it. I don't think I'm that big or that important or that influential or that charismatic. So I have no <laughs> no new bobbleheads. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think I'm that much of a uh, public figure where people actually want to buy my stuff. There's also a bit on egotism right i i am kind of anti-ego and selling like my shirts i don't know like you know what what would that achieve i'm trying to kind of build an army you know the the, the new army the new mob you know I, I, I don't know i don't know what i would do and how so um yeah i i don't plan to um i don't really see a need to or any gain in doing so um possible but you know, I'm, I'm just a, a teacher, you know, why, why would someone, you know, want to buy a t-shirt with my name on it? I mean, if I do some t-shirts, I want to make cool shirts, like well designed ones, like good graphic design, not stuff with like my name on it. Because I'm not that marketable. Maybe one day will be. But I'll need some more gold medals. To, uh even be touched. Alright, it's nearly 3am, I reckon we'll, we'll finish up pretty soon. Uh, favourite fruit? Uh, dragon fruit. That's an easy question. <laughs> Bucket hats, nah. I don't know, like, uh, I haven't really thought about how to market myself, like, uh, I, I'm just me, I, I, don't, I don't really have a brand, I don't really have, you know, image. Don't really need it either. Um, white dragon fruit. So a question there for uh, any opinion on lever limb compound? I've I've no opinion. Though. They're cool, but they kind of have like the the they have the best of both worlds for recapping compound. They also have the worst of both worlds. Um, but I haven't shot one personally, so I don't really have an opinion on that. Okay, well it is now three a.m. I've made one or two strings in the stream because I didn't want to you know make a stream at midnight. But it's now like three a.m. So it doesn't really matter. But uh, is it really summer? Yes. It is summer. Is there anything wrong with an Olympic anchor for bare bow? The main uh, difficulty with shooting with a low anchor with a bare bow is that you have a much higher gap between the arrow and the eye. So it's hard to get a good sight picture because it's so low. So you will naturally shoot way too high. People who shoot trad or shoot with a bare bow style anchor higher so to have a better alignment with the sight, uh, with the uh, the target. Um, so yeah, like the Olympic archers use sights, so they don't they don't need a visual reference for the arrow because the sight is the visual reference. People who shoot bare bow would generally use the arrow in some way, so they need to make the arrow higher, otherwise it will go way over the top. So that's the main reason why you don't normally see it with bare bow. Yeah, that, I, I, I can't name a an, an aluminium riser the same price as a phantom in the left hand. It doesn't exist. Um, Ryan199, have I played RuneScape? Yes, I have. Um, 15 years ago. I mean, now you call it old school RuneScape. Back then it was RuneScape. <laughs> oh, RuneScape 2, you know, because you had RuneScape Classic, which was the, the old, old RuneScape. They had RuneScape, which is now old school RuneScape. Now there's like three, isn't it? Um, Matthew again, what poundage bow would you need to start competitive shooting? Um, depends on what you're doing outdoor or indoor. Indoors are 18 meters. You can shoot 18 meters if you have like a 20 pound bow. Because 20 pounds will make 18 meters just fine. Um, but to do serious competitive shooting, 
with an indoor or outdoor, you probably want maybe a mid 30s to a 40 pound bow. Um, you can probably you can reach 70 meters with a 35 pound bow, though it can be a bit of a struggle for some arrows. Uh, but yeah, probably at least a 36 pound bow. Um, also depends on your draw length, because if you if, if you have a short draw length, that'd be a lot less. So yeah, a 40 pound bow is pretty expected, um, and elite athletes will shoot like high 40s to 50s for the competition. How do you aim with a recurve bow? I know, that's a pretty vague question. Bear bow or sights? Use sights or use a bear bow method. It's string walking, face walking, or gap shooting. Those are the main three. I will cover them at some point. It just takes time to do. More snow for you guys. <laughs> uh, do I hunt? No, I don't. Do I attend bear bow field comps? No, I don't, I don't shoot bear bow. I'm, I'm an Olympic freestyle shooter, so I should recurve. While I do have trad bear bows, I don't shoot them normally, so I don't shoot competition for bear bow. Uh, Alex Noodles, uh, I, sh I could do head to head. Um, yeah, like the, the app does it. <sighs> it's just time, right? Because time on range means I'm either practicing for myself, I am running a clinic or a course, or I'm making a video, right? And what would you rather do? Have a head to head with me, live or on video, or actually make a video that can help thousands of other people, right? So for me, I'm not being like up myself here, but if I do film something, it's got to be worthwhile, right? So I don't want to do a head to head because that's it's a fun thing, but I don't want to organize it. Even hosting it, it's, it's kind of um, yeah. Largest champ uh, competition, uh, state championships. I haven't been um, elsewhere though, that's about it. Okay, it is, sorry, I'm just tapping my, my um, jig there. Getting a little tired. So it is now 3 a.m. or 2.58, so it's about time. So I reckon, thank you for uh, your comments and your participation. When is the next live stream? Depends on when I wake up. Right? I've, I'm probably training in the afternoon today. So I'm not gonna be streaming at the same time last time. Um, it's either going to be, it's either going to be, um, in, let's say eight hours time to finish my last string, um, or it will be in around, uh, 15 hours time when I do a, an evening stream, um, depends on when I wake up, what I'm doing and how good my throat feels. Cause I've been casting all day. So, um, I'm a little tired of that. Wow. Uh, I missed the comment there. Uh, mm -mm. uh, Kelvin, why did I choose to shoot this off the shelf to Sage? Sage? Um, I was offered the package from Three Rivers Archery and had a choice. Because I already shot off the rest for all my other bows, um, I wanted to try shooting off the shelf. Now, at the time, I was a complete noob at trad archery. I couldn't figure it out. But I now shoot off the shelf for my Samic Sage. I shoot off the shelf for my bear takedown. And I find it completely natural now. But I wanted to try. Because, you know, like I didn't want the same thing twice. I had the choice. I tried something different. Same with the, the, the thumb ring. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot thumb draw for a different bow. Because have different bows for different purposes. All right, no more questions, guys. It is now. Uh, those who are asking questions that I've already answered, someone else can help me answer them, but I think that's about it for today, guys. 3 a.m. exact. So that is it for the stream. Thank you for joining me. You can sound pretty tired now, but um, yeah, thank you for joining me. It's been a great fun. Um, and hopefully I'll catch you for the next stream where we'll finish our last stream. Start thinking about ideas for colors and names, and I might make your stream next. Anyway, this is New Sensei. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.